The book is called The Fix is In, the showbiz manipulations of the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, and NASCAR. The author joins us now. Brian Tui is with us. Brian, uh, thanks for taking the time. I, I, I am actually amazed by the reaction I get from people when they see the book itself. The word has gotten out on, on what you're uh, talking about here. I had a guy delivering something to my house who saw it sitting on the, on the table and said, hey, have you read that? There's some interesting stuff in there. I mean, people are people are following along with this stuff. I, I would have thought they would have considered you something of a party pooper for what you're trying to get across here, but you, you have some people that are believing. Yeah, some people don't think I'm crazy. It's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what compelled you to write this book? Well, I realized that there was corruption within sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. It may be spread out, but it's there. And then I started seeing, you know, you see these results that just happen to be coincidental, supposedly, but the results always seem to benefit the league. And I started to ask myself, well, can games be fixed? And I realized, well, of course they can. The mafia and gamblers have fixed games for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always come to light or been, you know, exposed, but it's happened. So then I asked one step further. I said, are games being fixed? And if they are being fixed today, who is most likely to fix them and who is it going to benefit the most when a game is perhaps fixed? And the answer would be the leagues themselves because they're the ones who would see the profit. They're the ones who, if they could manipulate games because so much money that they earn comes from television now, that if they can manipulate games to get higher ratings, to get more people watching, they're going to make more money and everybody involved is going to profit. And in doing so... um... I mean, when did it start? I mean, did it, did it start when television money came in? Did it start when, when it was a gambling money? I mean, when did the whole thing really begin? Well, I mean, for sports itself, when, you know, fixes occurred, I mean, they literally date back. I, in the book, I have them dating back to the 1800s. Yep. I yep. Mean, basically, when people got what? together and, you know, played a baseball game, somebody would be throwing money down on it, and somebody realized, hey, you know, if I can get that player to do what I want him to do, right. I could probably make a little bit more money. With modern-day sports, there's a lot of times when you read in the night about the 1960s when television really started throwing money into, be it boxing, professional football, baseball, those sorts of things, athletes and coaches and former people associated with the sport would say, you know, a lot of times it seemed like when the networks paid into the sports, they acted like they had bought the sport and that they started making themselves known, that they started really influencing things in and around the game. But, of course, they always never take the extra step and say they actually influence the game they, itself, they would stop at the sidelines. But I say that's, you know, quite unlikely. That Jacksonville game against the Titans that raised a big stink recently where the referee approached each coach and asked them at the two-minute warning to call their timeouts, even though the game was decided, because ESPN needed to broadcast more commercials. Mm-hmm. And that's something that was I find fascinating because it was brought up that the NFL was going to look into it and investigate this, and within two days... You know, it came out that Jeff Fisher, who was a Titans coach, who mentioned this occurring, some reporter who was close to Tennessee Titans team said, oh, it was just a joke. And then the whole thing just disappeared. <laughs> well, it wasn't a joke. There's no way it was a joke. The guy was flat out telling the truth. I've seen the press conference. Anybody can look it up on YouTube. He wasn't joking. The referees approached him. There was no reason for Jacksonville to call the timeouts. They were losing 23-3. to They wanted to lose them 30-3 to because of the timeouts. I mean, there was no reason for them except ESPN needed them because they had to fulfill their advertising you know, commitments. Unbelievable. I mean, they, they lied to you about drugs in the game. They lied to you about the drug testing. They lied to you about criminals in the game, gambling surrounding it. And then you go, well, what about the games themselves? They go, oh, no, those are clean. Um, How much do you believe that? Well, you know, and and I think every fan from every team, and I and I don't necessarily know if that's where you where it all began. If uh, a lot of people, okay, for for my money, the game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys, the seventy five NFC Championship game, was fixed because Drew Pearson pushed off, got, and the referee let him get away with it, and that was a point where they said Dallas is America's team, and this is the team they want to see in the Super Bowl, and whatever you can do. If ever a game for me would have been one that was fixed, that would be it. Does every fan have a game that they feel is fixed, or, or is it just certain instances? Is it, is it epidemic? Is it across the board that they manipulate? Because I know you, on your website, thefixesin.net, you're already talking about this NFL season and the Calvin Johnson catch and some of the other stuff that's gone on. Are these season-long things that are done to reach a particular goal, or is it instances of where the outcome of one game can lead to greater glory for the league? Well, I think 
if even if the NFL, for example, fixed just a game, yeah, I mean, even a game in the past thirty years that they said, "Hey, we want Team A to beat Team B," instantly all their credibility is lost. Yeah, instantly fans have to go, "Oh, what happened here? Wait a second. But I think what they see is they see profit in certain storylines and certain teams going on longer than they should. Like one of the examples I point out, which a lot of people have pointed out, is the Patriots after 9-11 or the New Orleans Saints after Hurricane Katrina. And even this season, I think if you look at the four remaining teams left in the playoffs for the Super Bowl, you have both the Bears and the New York Jets are in the biggest media markets in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then the Packers and the Steelers arguably probably have the greatest fan base in the United States. Yeah from coast to coast. Yeah. So no matter who goes in the Super Bowl right now, the NFL is going to be making tons of money, and they're probably going to have, once again, probably the most watched television program in United States history yeah. in the Super Bowl. Well, and it's amazing that all that happens to be occurring right on the verge of this potential lockout for next season. If you look at the matchups, yeah. and you could have had the exact opposite of what we have in the Bears and the Packers. Could Atlanta, and Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. yeah, you'd have had Atlanta and Seattle, who... Would that have been as much of a media draw as Bears no. Packers? No, no. And would the Ravens and the Patriots have been the same as perhaps the Jets and Steelers? Uh, no, no, I don't think so at all. I mean, and, and again, I mean, I think you can you can draw that conclusion and you can look at it with a skeptical eye. But I think in some cases, and the reason I would I would debate you on that one is because you brought it up and said, look how well it turned out for the NFL this week. It couldn't have turned out any better for the NFL this weekend. But in this case, I'd be hard pressed to find some way that any of these games, some, something was cooking with any of these games just because the way they turned out, based on what you've seen all season long, is the way they sh- probably should have turned out, save for maybe the, the New England Jets game. But in either case, the league was going to win in that one. Well, and perhaps that's what they want you to think. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, if you go back, and that's what I tried to do in the book, is if you go back through the history of the NFL or some of these other leagues, mm-hmm. Those perfect matchups always seem to happen. Yeah, something. And well, that's kind of the thing. It's how many times you're going to allow a coincidence to just be a coincidence. Yeah, and I think well, you know maybe someone's influence this. Maybe they can fix games. I mean, they could do it through the referees. They could maybe do it through a quarterback. They could do it through a coach. It wouldn't be something where a lot of people argue. Well, everybody would have to be involved, and so many people would be involved. It would come out sooner or later. Well, it, not really. The mafia has taught us that if you can get to one guy, you can influence a game. At that's one, all you need. At one point in the book, you even reference the Minnesota Timberwolves. And here we all thought it was just complete ineptitude on the part of the front office for all those years of the Timberwolves. And, and you're implying that may not have been the case. No, with the Timberwolves, I brought up the game tanking, which occurs at the end of the NBA season. Yeah, yeah. And that's something a lot of people will say, well, of course that happens. Yeah. Well, who's ordering the team to tank? It's the owner. And if the owner, because who else would benefit the owner because they want to get the highest draft pick, if the owner, how does how does that happen? How does the owner does he walk into the locker room and say, "Hey guys, um, I want a higher draft pick. Why don't you lose the next couple of games?" Right, right. I it, mean, if that can occur, and a lot of people wouldn't argue that it does occur, can't they then maybe walk into any locker room at any time and say, "Hey, you know, today you guys just don't do so well." Well, and I don't think anyone would, would debate. You know, the all time greatest is the Knicks tanking to get Patrick Ewing. You know, I'm I'm fairly certain the Spurs did it to get Tim Duncan. I mean, it it's probably happened more in the NBA than any other sport and and what we learn about sports is it's great very beneficial to be bad because you can be very good down the road because of it i'm going to throw a question at you and i don't i don't don't mean to make uncomfortable but i've always said if i had the time and the resources and the bodies and the wherewithal to 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 pull off and exploit and bring this to light and i mean i'm talking bust everybody out i would do it but you know what i'd be i'd be afraid for my life because there's people out there that are told to keep an eye on this kind of thing. Do you ever worry about that when you're trying to get research and talk to people that somebody may be out there for you? Well, it is interesting that all the professional sports league has their own security division, <laughs> and they basically are staffed with former members of the FBI, CIA, DEA, and those sorts of you know law enforcement officials. But no, I'm really if they want to come get me. Come get me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really what it boils down to, in my stake. You know, if if I, it, I'd almost be happy because you know what if they did, you know, put the gun to the back of my head or whatever. At least I'd know. Hey, you know what? I'm right. There you go. You're right. I you, can go out knowing I'm right. That's- you could go out on top knowing you were right, and that was the end. Oh yeah, my goodness. Make me happy in a way. And I'm very anxious to see uh, your new one coming out. Uh, when can we expect uh, the release of, uh, of 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 the second one? 
Well, the sequel, I'm still working on researching and writing it right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to detail more about the FBI's investigation into all the sports activities that they believe were fixed. And there's literally, I've gotten over 400 files from the FBI through the Freedom of Information Act, which literally anybody can do. And um, it covers everything from college basketball, college football, pro football, pro basketball, Major League Baseball, um, horse racing, boxing, and then it even gets weird from there. Have you had any reaction to the book from the from the various leagues? Any comment from them or any of the uh, officials or particulars with any of the teams? No, they haven't come after me, and I don't think they can because everything I put in the book is true. I mean, all I do is I connect all these dots and say mm-hmm. if all these facts are true, why can't they lead to my conclusions? People can argue my conclusions, and I don't mind that they do, but I don't think you can argue the facts that lead up to them. And it's up to you to decide whether you think, hey, maybe there actually is some sort of fix going on here or if it's all just a bunch of hooey.